Well, good afternoon. Can I welcome everyone to the first meeting of the Committee on the Scottish Government's Handling of Harassment Complaints. Can I remind everyone to turn off their mobile phones as they do interfere with the sound system? Uh, can I note that everyone's here and no apologies have been received? Agenda item one is declaration of interests. And this first item allows committee members to declare any interests they have that they think are relevant to the work of the committee. And background information has been provided in the note uh, from the clerk, uh, paper one in your um, agenda. Um, so declare first any interests of your own or say you have re uh, no relevant interests to declare. Um, I think it's best if I just probably go round the table. So, Alistair, do you want to start? Nothing specific to declare other than to refer people to my register of interests. No relevant interests, convener. No relevant interests. No relevant interests, convener. Um, while it is not a registrable uh, interest, uh, convener, I would like to state for the record, even although it's a well-known fact, uh, that I have served under uh, both governments of Alex Salmond and Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, therefore, there may be uh, individuals who come into the gaze of this inquiry that I know or whom uh, I have worked with. Um, I do not consider that an inhibitor uh, to doing a job on this committee on behalf of Parliament and doing a robust and fair uh, job um, at that. But I just, um, I, I suppose, wanted to state the obvious uh, for, for the record. So thank you. No relevant interests, convener. No relevant interests. No relevant interests, convener. Uh, thank you. And myself, I suppose I'm in the same position uh, as Angela. So while it's not a registrable interest, um, I, I am in the same position, as I say, um, as Angela. But otherwise, no registrable interests. OK, so we can move on then to agenda item two, which is choice of convener. And our next task is to choose a convener of this committee. And the procedure is explained to members in uh, paper two. Uh, as you know, the Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish National Party are eligible for nomination as convener of this com committee. So can I invite members to nominate someone from the SNP as convener? Yes, Jackie, yeah. Okay. I wonder um, whether I could just say something very briefly. Um, there is absolutely no question in my mind about the personal integrity of the person who is likely to end up being convener, um, and that is quite clear because I've worked with her for many, many years. Um, the issue at hand, though, is whether the party of government um, should be able to appoint the convener of this committee. And I say this because it is clearly unprecedented that a committee of this parliament is handling complaints against a former First Minister, um, the actions of the current First Minister, both of who were the leader and are the leader of the SNP. I think that places SNP members in a really quite difficult position for which they have my sympathy. But my primary concern is, f is one of transparency for this committee um, in order to do its work. And as we all know, um, you know the, the, the question of perception is all in politics. And the perception, um, unfortunately, is that the party of government is actually appointing the convener of this committee. And I think that would be unfortunate. I think this committee needs to set off on entirely the right foot without fear or favour. And for that reason, I would ask the committee to think carefully about whether it is indeed the SNP that should have the convenership of the committee. Um, and failing agreement from members, because I'm conscious that the Parliament has already made a determination on this, I would wish my concerns to be recorded. Thank you, convener. Donald, is it on the same? It is, okay. it is convener. Yes, I'd just like to put on record uh, my concerns, and I speak to you for Margaret Mitchell in this regard, about the fact that the convener of the committee uh, will be selected from the SNP. Uh, this has nothing to do with the personal qualities or integrity of Linda Fabiani, uh, an MSP for whom, I'm the, uh, for whom I have the utmost respect. Uh, but for the points that Jackie Bailey has already noted, if ever there was a moment for justice to be done and for justice to be seen to be done, then this is it. And ultimately, it's a matter for the SNP members of the committee, because in line with the Bureau discussions, the vote in the chamber a few weeks ago, uh, and the rules of the Parliament, uh, we will not oppose it. I simply ask SNP members of this committee, even at this late stage, to reconsider and offer the convenership to uh, another party. 
Alex. Uh, thank you, Convener. Um, if I might add, um, in reflection of the comments of my colleagues, uh, Donald and uh, Jackie, uh, my, the position of my party is, uh, has some sympathy with these, uh, these remarks. Um, the optics of this are not great for the Scottish Government to be chairing this committee. However, uh, this committee, perhaps unlike any committee that precedes it, will undergo a, a level of scrutiny that no other committee in Parliament is often afforded. As such, we have to trust in the probity of uh, our members and the recognition that they will uh, perform their function with diligence and humanity. Um, and I recognise also that this matter was settled by a vote in Parliament. So. Um, I share some of these concerns, but will support uh, the nomination of an SNP convener if that is what the SNP members decide is the best way forward. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Alison. Um, yes, thank you, convener. I would just like to um, point out that the, um, the Business Bureau agreed the remit and the membership of this committee, including um, the, you know, the, the matter of um, the convener and Parliament has subsequently voted on this matter. Um, and I'd just like to put on the record that, uh, you know, this issue was not opposed at Business Bureau when it was first raised. And um, I have every confidence in this committee um, to do the important work that, that we have to do. Anyone else? Okay, well, um, the, what has been said will obviously now uh, be on the record. As a number of members have said, this was discussed fully at the Bureau, and the Bureau came to a decision and put forward uh, a motion to Parliament, which uh, was agreed by Parliament. We have had situations in the past um, where, because of the de method and the way it works, uh, people have um, had questions about uh, the convenership, but in all cases, um, it has gone with uh, the turn, whoever uh, it has been. And we all recognise, I think, um, the nature of, of this committee is perhaps unique in the lifetime of this parliament uh, so far. So I think it's good that that has been put uh, on the record. So can I invite then members to nominate someone from the SNP as convener? Okay, as no seconder is required, are we agreed to choose Linda Fabiani as our convener? Agreed. Okay, thank you. Uh, Linda, congratulations on your appointment, and I will hand over the chair to you willingly. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we move on to agenda item three, which is the appointment of deputy convener. Um, the Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party are eligible for nomination as deputy convener of this committee. Uh, so I, may I invite nomination for a member of the Scottish Conservatives as deputy convener. Thank you, convener. I would like to nominate Margaret Mitchell, MSP. As no seconder is required in this regard, do we agree to choose Margaret Mitchell as our deputy convener? Congratulations, Margaret. Thank you, convener. <laughs> <laughs> now move on to agenda item four, um, which, as you'll see on your agenda, is a decision on taking business in private. I would like to say at this point that as convener, I intend... Um, to be as open and transparent as possible, but we do have to recognise that we need to be mindful of ongoing court proceedings and what is said in public. So what I'm proposing here is that we discuss in public the timing of the committee's inquiry as outlined in the paper from the clerk that you already have. But I would also like committee to go into private session for a short time to discuss in more detail how we may wish to approach the inquiry overall. Um, that will include discussing on which day and at what time we should meet in the future, because everyone has other commitments. I would intend then to go back into public so that any decisions we take in private discussion can be put on record, as well as in the minute of the meeting. So can I ask members if they agree to take um, item six, on their approach to the inquiry in private. Thank you. 
We now move on to agenda item five, where the committee will consider the timing of the inquiry. I would like to place on record here that um, what we have actually established, what the committee is establishing here is to undertake a specific piece of work. Um, it's worth having on the full record, and that is to, dis to consider and report on the actions of the First Minister, Scottish Government officials and special advisers in dealing with complaints about Alex Salmond, the former First Minister, considered under the Scottish Government's handling of harassment complaints involving current or former ministers. That's procedure and actions in relation to the Scottish Ministerial Code. Everybody has read the remit and read the papers that have been put forward and considering the timing of the inquiry. The, the, the Bureau, the Parliamentary Bureau agreed, of course, that this inquiry should not impede, interfere with or replicate investigations ongoing, nor should it prejudice any subsequent legal proceedings. We all know that um, court proceedings are now active and the Parliament's sub rule now applies. Can I invite comments, discussion, questions from members of the committee? Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Convener. Um, I understand the collective will of the committee and understanding of the committee around the rules around sub and the necessity uh, for us to perhaps suspend our formal hearings of this inquiry until the conclusion of such legal proceedings. However, um, there are aspects of this case which aren't sub um, which might be helpful for us to receive um, informal briefings on or written briefings on pertaining to um, the complaint procedure um, that predated the current procedure, the existing procedure, and how it's meant to operate in best practice, just so that we can familiarise ourselves with the landscape. So whilst I would support a suspension of formal hearing, I think that there is some background reading we could be furnished with or briefing that we could be furnished with, which would uh, allow us that understanding of the landscape without prejudice any proceedings. Mm -hmm. Alison, yeah. um, I just wonder, Convener, if it might be possible for the committee to write to the Scottish Government um, and ask for timing, you know, with regards to the, you know, the other investigations that we're, mm -hmm. we're waiting to, to learn more of, you know, just for timing of the code referral and the internal review, so we're in a better position to understand, you know, when that might be complete. Uh, yes, Convener. I think you know there's a danger that this this committee may be um, suspended, you know, uh, to sub judice um, rules are, are looked at, and there is, I agree with Alec Coham, and useful information that can be gathered just now that will help our um, our investigation and our inquiry when we do actually take that up formally, and. It's all about complaints to an extent. So, for example, looking back at how complaints have been handled since the inception of the ha of the, the Parliament would be useful background information, and perhaps more of that detail we can hammer out um, in, in 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 private. But um, I think on the record, uh, I don't think we need to be standing still just now. There's useful work that can be done that will aid our inquiry in the longer term. Donald Cameron, then Angela Constance. Thank you, Kavina. On a slightly different point, but relating to timing, um, no issue at all, of course, with the, the substantial point about delaying until proceedings have finished. Um, I simply wonder whether there's a mechanism where either formally or informally the committee might note where progress stands, say, every three months, uh, or, or, or convene very briefly, um, just, just so we're, we're up to date and we don't um, postpone indefinitely. Um, it's simply an observation I just want, wanted to raise. Angela, thanks. Thank you, Convener. So, uh, following on from Mr Cameron's point, um, I would certainly be sympathetic to a uh, committee not postponing um, indefinitely um, and coming together, um, you know, periodically. Um, I would also be interested in advice on two uh, further points. Um, I'm, uh, like most MSPs, perfectly aware uh, of the sub -judice. Uh, rules that are in their standing orders. Uh, I'm well aware of the statement that the presiding officer uh, recently made in, in Parliament. Uh, also, I'm aware of the recommendation uh, that the Bureau has made about the, the inquiry not beginning until uh, legal proceedings um, conclude. 
Um, but I think it is important that uh, in terms of this committee that we perhaps receive our own um, advice uh, on that point. My you know, understanding as a, a non-legal person is that the, the sub-judice rules uh, may inhibit or prevent aspects uh, of uh, the inquiry in terms of the work that we will uh, most definitely want to do, but I would appreciate some um, uh, advice uh, on that. And uh, the other point that Mr Cole Hamilton raised, I think we should consider whether there is, um, you know, sensible background work, uh, perhaps for our, our own learning that could be done in the meantime while legal proceedings um, progress that may, of course, save time in the future. Jackie Bailey. Um, I would agree that I don't think we as a committee can do anything that would run the risk of interfering with what goes on in court, both for the sake of the defendant and indeed the prosecution. So I would be opposed to us doing anything formal. That said, I do think there is an opportunity for some informal evidence gathering um, that, that would pave the way for future committee meetings. And as such, um, I think we should um, meet from time to time whilst things are continuing. The other point I would make, um, convener, is I don't believe we should wait for the outcome of the Scottish Government review, nor do I believe we should wait for the outcome of the First Minister's self-referral under the Ministerial Code of Conduct. This committee have been given a remit by Parliament, um, and we can work out you know, the logistics of things happening at the same time, um, but certainly I don't think we should delay for any other reason than live legal proceedings. Maureen, did you? Yes, convener, thank you. Um, I'm a bit concerned about the prospect of taking informal evidence because I think one of the problems is that that might um, convene sub judice rules. So uh, I think it's really important that if there is anything we can do to make ourselves more aware of background that we do that. So if there's reading stuff from Standards and Procedures Committee, previous um, uh, actions that might be relevant um, or whatever, I think we should do that so that when this committee does convene after uh, the legal proceedings, that we are, we are prepared and can hit the ground running. Are you two on the same line we of thought are, here? We are yes. indeed on the same page. It's just perhaps my use of language <laughs> is different to Maureen Watts, but we're in the same same place entirely. Yeah. And of course, we, we all have to be very careful about that use Indeed. of language. Um, be, be, and it's very, very important. Alex, you want this to say This is exactly the else? same point. Just for the sake of clarity, convener, I, I understand entirely Maureen Watts' point. However, I am anxious about um, us individually going off and doing private study about this. I'd rather that we all had the same information um, and we're on the same page when we did reconvene. Well, uh, can, can I say as convener that everything that has been said here reflects the thoughts that I have had about this too. Um, what I would suggest that we do is take all these points on board um, with our clerks and put that together. Margaret and I can have a look at it and then circulate to the committee a view of how we think we should proceed with this in terms of what we can actually gather together as background information, what would be most useful for us, and indeed whether it may well be worthwhile to set a regular timetable of coming together to review progress as a committee. Would that be acceptable for everyone? Yeah, for yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And we will now move into private session.